Welcome back. Today we fitted all of the doors for the loft. So this door is for the ensuite shower room. You can see that we have gone for a modern rose handle which uh, gives it a very stylish look. Now these are very inexpensive, we got these from Amazon, they didn't cost a fortune but they look fantastic and this has got a separate bathroom lock so we've got a thumb turn lock to be able to lock the door and you'll see that the latch that, that fits into is a double sized one. We've put a brand new door stoppings, we've created this room from scratch so you can see this is just raw timber and if you look where the hinges are these have been cut in to the timber so they're flush fitting so you can see they, they, they fitted in really nice and tight which means that it'll be really lovely close. Uh, now this door is not a fire door because you don't need it for the, for the bathroom. The door to the room however is a fire door so one the, the room for the bath the door for the bathroom is 35 mil thick this one's 44 mil thick and will resist fire for up to 30 minutes. These doors are oak, real oak, uh, it's a veneer, uh, so we fitted it with the same hinges, but the difference with these doors, the fire doors, is that they are a lot heavier, so they're much more solid, so we put three hinges on here, which means that there's no problem in the future. And one of the issues with the loft conversion is that if you add a loft to your existing house, you then have to change all of the doors in your house to fire doors. So as we come downstairs here, you can see that we've had to then put the same oak fire doors in every single room of the house. So that adds a bit more cost to the overall price of your loft conversion, but it does give you the opportunity to upgrade the rest of the house. So these doors previously were very old fashioned white painted doors. And you can see now that we've added the flooring and with adding the oak doors, it's really given it a very much more modern feel. So you can see these two rooms here have been added. So we've had to buy eight doors. So the engineered wood flooring is now going down everywhere in here. I just wanted to show how it works. It's a tongue and groove system. So if you look at the cross section, you'll see that uh, one section has a groove in it. So it's got basically an indentation. And the other half has what's known as a tongue, and this just clip, clips together quite nicely. Yeah, one feeds into the other, uh, it sort of clips in nicely. And we, we'll add a bit, little bit of glue to these just to give it uh, a little bit of rigidity. So that's how the wood wooden floor fits together. Uh, this is um, this is what's known as brushed and oiled. So it's actually had some oil applied to it in the factory before it was packaged, which gives it some protection and also gives it a deeper, richer color. If I show this against the door, which is unfinished. So this door is an oak unfinished door at the moment. So it's had no oil whatsoever. It's very dry and a bit light. This has had the oil applied, UV oil to it. And it's also brushed, which means that it's got texture. So when I, if you run your finger over it, you can feel all of the different bits of the grain. If it, so. If you're walking around with bare feet, it just gives you that nice real wood effect under your feet, which is great. To ensure that we don't have any creaks or squeaks or any movement at all underneath the new flooring, we need to make sure that the current floor is completely fixed down so there's no movement whatsoever. So you can see here, we've gone round and applied screws into the joists that are underneath to all of the existing flooring. So every single piece of flooring has been screwed down completely firm because if you leave any sort of movement or anything underneath the floor, then it will creak and squeak and make noise and will drive you mental. So you've got to make sure that you do that really well. So we're now fitting this. This is your key, key piece of kit for this, which is a chop saw. So obviously measuring everything and then um, cutting it to size and then fitting all the pieces together. So we are now about three quarters of the way complete in this room. So a lot of it's been covered to, um, to keep, it, keep all the dust away. But we can see this section here. If we look at the underlay, this is uh, what's known as royal gold underlay. So I grab a piece of that. It's uh, essentially 
traditional underlay. So this is the sort of underlay that you'd have a little bit of flexible um, foam. Uh, but on top of that, it's got this moisture barrier. So this gold laminate covering, which um, gives you uh, the protection that the floor is not going to warp. You're not going to get any moisture coming up and causing the boards to start beveling or buckling. Um, and this is it also gives it a little bit more of a rich feel under the under underfoot. So we've put all the royal gold down. You can see here, it just gets cut to size and laid out. And this is what's known as a floating floor. So we're not actually gluing this down. Literally, the, the wooden floor is sitting on top of this underlay so literally we'll just float on top of it the key thing for a floating floor is that it will expand and contract so you've got to make sure that you leave an expansion gap around the edges so if i look at the edge of this here we've got quite a significant gap so i can get my finger in there and we'll have that at both ends of this floor and that means that and we'll have it all the way around so that will be all around this edge. So all the, the edges of the floor will have a similar gap, which is gonna be you know, quite significant. And that means that if the floor starts to expand and contract sideways or lengthways, then um, it's not gonna cause the floor to start buckling. And we'll be hiding that by putting the skirting board over the top. So we don't have any skirting board here at the moment, but the skirting board will sit on top of that so you won't see this gap. The skirting board will probably finish halfway across this. And then um, what will happen if it expands and contracts, you'll never see it. And you just leave the skirting board sitting above it so that it means that um, it's not pushing against it. It's able to slide under and slide back. So it's only minimal, the movement, but it will cause the floor to lift up and buckle and is, is a real headache if you don't do it properly. So this floor has been Fitted now, it's all coming together really nicely. Uh, it looks a bit of a mess in here right now because we are in the process of doing it. But once that's done, we will give this floor an additional oil because the boards, although they've already been oiled, when they go down, because they're from different packets and might have been done at different times, they might look a little bit patchwork in terms of the colors. So you can see here some of some of the boards look a little bit darker and some look a bit lighter, which you do get with oak anyway. But if we put a layer of uh, new oil on the top, firstly, uh, it will help with the color, but secondly, it also protects it. So this sort of floor, uh, you're meant to oil it once a year just to keep it looking rich, stop it drying out, make sure that it still has all the properties that you want. So the other thing we're doing in here, which is, again is a really nice touch of you're doing your loft, is to make sure you put the flooring into all of your cupboards and cubby holes because there's nothing worse. If you're trying to store something in here, like this paint, for example, and you try and push it in and it's, there's no wooden floor in here, it will drop down and then it becomes more of a pain to bring things in and out. And also, it just looks more professional. So if you look down there where there's no flooring, that looks a bit disappointing. Whereas here, you open the cupboard and it's all wood and it will look great. And that's really going to set this apart. So we've got it again, you can't see it because it's a real mess at the moment, but this is where our built-in wardrobe is in the room. And you'll see, you can see just underneath uh, where the spirit level is, we've already put the flooring all the way through that. So when you open those cupboard doors, once we've fitted them, then it will look, um, you know, it's the same level. And going out into the hall, we fitted this all the way to the edge and we've done a temporary fix on where the nosing is gonna go for the stairs, we haven't started doing the stairs yet, but the nosings will be fitted once everything else is done, and then we'll do these stairs in, in one hit. Finally, onto the painting. Not a particularly exciting part of the build to watch or talk about, but uh, has to be done, obviously. So we have the fresh plaster, which was all pink and brown. And the first thing to do is apply a mist coat. So a mist coat is basically emulsion that's been watered down. And the reason for doing that is that when you put paint onto fresh plaster, it's very dry and it sucks all of the paint in very quickly. So you have a mist coat and it just helps seal it all before you then start putting the actual top coats on. So we've now cut out here all of the uh, 
second fix electrics and it's been painted and so it'll have everything gets painted white initially and then we will apply some color so these walls in the hallway still haven't been painted yet in, in here uh, and we're still doing the door ways around the bathroom and all along this wall so this will be painted color once once everything's painted white we'll then apply some color so once the walls have all been painted white and they've got a good undercoat we then apply the actual color to the vertical surfaces and the logic behind that is obviously the white paint is cheaper than the colored paint so you want to put your undercoat on in white as you can see here it's all been painted white and then once it's got a good layer of undercoat on there you can then apply your top coat so we were applying one coat at this stage all the doors and the floors and everything will be fitted and then the top coat will be done afterwards to make sure that there's no marks or damage.